If you want to I think this is how love goes Check yes or no Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the binomial distribution and I'm going to show you how to construct a binomial distribution table in Excel. The formula I've shown here is the probability of a success. X denotes the number of successes. So if we think about this in terms of flipping a coin, we can look at what each one of these variables means. N is the number of trials, in other words, the number of flips of the coin. X would be the number of successes. So say we take the coin landing on a head to be a success. X would be the number of times the coin landed on its head. P is the probability of a success or the probability the coin lands on the head. And Q is the probability of a failure. Now we're talking about a binomial distribution and one of the key features of a binomial distribution is it's either a success or a failure. Now don't get hung up on the words because we define what a success is. So for example, a success might be the coin lands on heads or the success might actually be that the coin lands on tails. I determine the success. So if I wanted to use this formula and figure out, say, in n equals 10 flips of my coin, what is the probability that I get three heads, exactly three heads, okay? So three would be my number of successes, 10 would be my number of trials, and I could plug it into this formula. Now we typically know that when we flip a coin, the probability of a head is a half, okay? So notice that I can fill all of these things in. 10 would go in for n, 3 would go in for x, p would be 0.5, and now if we know p, the probability of success, we also know the probability of a failure. Because this is a binomial distribution, the probability of a failure is 1 minus the probability of a success, and so that's how we can figure out q. Most often students ask me, well, I know the probability of a success, how do I figure out Q? And I tell them, if you know P, you know Q, okay? And so you know what to do. If you know P, you know Q, you know what to do. Take 1 minus P and that will give you Q. Now you can plug into this formula and this would give me the probability of exactly three heads, okay? If I plugged it in and calculated the number. What if I wanted to know the probability that I get three or less? Well, that would mean the probability I get three, but now I'm gonna have, have to add to that, or anything less than three. Probability I get two, the probability I get one, and even the probability I get none, okay? And so how would we calculate this? Well, we would have to Calculate P, probability of 3, probability of 2, probability of 1, probability of none. So we'd have to use this formula to calculate each one of these. And you can see how it gets to be hard to calculate. So what we're going to do is do an example, and we'll use Excel to actually calculate our probability distribution table. The probability of dis distribution table figures out the probability of getting 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n successes. Okay? Alright, so for my example we're going to make some, some assumptions, but let's put, pretend that the twins play seven games and that the probability of winning a game is 0.65. So I'm going to define this as the probability of a success, or P, to be 0.65. They're going to play seven games, so I'm going to take my n to be seven, okay? And now in this particular, I've got several questions here, but the first one is, what is the probability they win exactly four games? So that's going to be the probability of four, p of four. Now we could use our formula here because we know everything that we need to. n would be seven x would be 4, so this is x equals 4. 
P would be 0.65 raised to the fourth. Q, all right, if we know P, we know Q. It's 1 minus 0.65. So in this case, it's going to be 0.35, okay, to the N minus X. And we could calculate that number, and it would give us our probability. But I've got other questions here as well. And so what we're going to do is construct our entire probability distribution table. So if we go into Excel, we can enter our X's. Remember, in this particular example, that N equals 7, okay? And so what we do for our X's is we always start at 0. And that's confusing to students. But remember, you can always have no successes, right? So 0 is going to be included in our probability distribution. And then we just count up to our N. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, and I start stop when I get to n. In other words, I can have zero successes. The twins can win no games, or I can have seven successes. They could win all seven, all right? And now I want to calculate the probability of each one of these. In other words, what I'm going to do over here is use this formula and each time calculate zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, on up to seven. Okay, and instead of having to do that by hand, I'm going to do it in Excel. And now Excel has a built-in function, and I've got it written out over here. It's called binome dist, B-I-N-O-M-D-I-S-T, open parentheses. And now you put in your number of successes. Now I could put in zero, but I'm going to use the drag feature in Excel. So I'm just going to click on this cell and say use whatever numbers in that cell. All right, comma, n. Now, n is not going to change, right? We said n is 7, n stays 7, so I'm just going to punch in 7. Probability of a success, well, if you recall, over here, we defined p to be 0.65, so I'm going to plug that in. Notice that you're going to have to use the decimal, 0.65. If it was 65%, I would change it to 0.65. And now this part's going to blow your mind. But in Excel, we're just going to type in the word false, okay? And you're just going to always use the word false, all right? So just put in the word false, F-A-L-S-E, close parentheses. So my probability of winning zero games is 0 .00064. And now I said I was going to use the drag feature. That's why I clicked on A2. If I drag this down, the only thing that changes in my formula every time is the X. So now if I click here, it's using A3, which is 1. So the probability of them winning one game is this. And my question was, what's the probability they win four games? So X is a success, or them winning four games would be 0.27, I mean 0.2679. All right, so now that I've constructed my table, I can answer the question. It says exactly four, so that's why I'm just going to take the number next to the four, and I got 0.2679. Now, now that we've constructed this table, we can answer a lot of these questions. What is the probability the win, um, they win less than three games, okay? All right, so now in this particular case, we'd have to use any number less than three. Please keep in mind that three is not less than three. Three is equal to three. So we'd take all the numbers less than three. So it'd be zero, one, two. Again, three is not less than three. So we take probability they win none, they win one, or they win two. Okay, and now that I have my distribution table here, I can just use my sum feature. So the probability of less than three is going to be equal to the probability they win none, plus the probability they win one, plus the probability they win two. Okay, and now over here I can just say equals the sum, open parentheses, zero, one, two. 
close parentheses, and I see that it's 0 0.05561. All right, so let's do a few more. The next question I asked was the probability they win five or more. Okay, so what is the probability they win five or more? All right. The probability of five or more means it can be five, right? Because we want to know the probability they win five or more. So anything more, six, seven. So the probability of five or more is probability five plus probability six plus the probability of winning seven. Now again, I can go over here. And I'm just typing this so you can see where the formula is coming from. All right, so that's what I need to calculate. And again, I can just use the sum feature equals SUM, open parentheses, and now I'm going to click on the probability of 5, 6, 7, and add those up. And I see 0.5322. All right, one that confuses students is when they say at most two games or at least two games, okay? So we're going to talk about at most. When I see most, it means this is the most it can be, okay? So it can be anything less, but the most it can be is two. So it's going to be at most two. It's going to be zero, one, and two, because this is the most it can be. If it was at least two, this is the least it can be. So the probability of at least two would mean probability of two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when you see these words, at most, that means it's the most it can be. If you see at least, that's the least it can be. Or it can be anything higher. Okay? So this was my original question. This is the one we're going to answer. Okay? Probability at most two. And that's going to equal the sum of... 0, 1, 2, and you probably already saw that that's the same thing as saying less than 3. So keep in mind you can ask the question in different ways to get the same um, answer. And now that I have my probability distribution table, I can answer these specific questions, but I can answer any question. What's the probability they win 5? 0.29848. What's the probability they win 2 or more? I could add all those up. Okay, so that's how we construct the probability distribution table. And I think in the end, you would have to agree that that is a lot simpler than trying to use this formula every time. Okay, so use Excel and the built-in function equals binome dist, and it will calculate your binomial distribution. Check.